Welcome to Us Crazy Christians, where we uncover Christian myths and misinterpretations with common sense Christianity. I'm your host, William E. Smith, and today we're going to take a look at the truth about repentance. Stick around. If you're new to Us Crazy Christians, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're a returning guest and haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? It's free. Plus, hit the notifications bell to be notified every time we post a new video. Check this out. Go. God, I repent. I'm sorry. I need you to forgive me. I don't talk to you how I'm supposed to. I let you down every day. I'm constantly thinking of sin. I don't, I don't want to go to hell. Forgive me. I repent. I'm sorry. I repent. Okay. I'm sorry. Lord, I repent. I threw my pencil down, and that lady, she tripped right over it, and I was laughing really hard at her. She old. And I really do repent. I'm really sorry, because I shouldn't have been laughing like that. It's the way the wind blew her wig off floored, and I couldn't help myself. And I repent, Lord, for that incident in a grocery store. When I kept staring at that lady booty like that, and her booty, it was so nice and plump and round, and it looked juicy. And I repent. I'm really sorry. I need you to forgive me for that. I'm always stealing food and I repent, Lord, because I just, my temptations with the food is just too strong and I can't control myself in that area. And I need you to forgive me, Lord, because I know I'm wrong and I'm sorry. Lord, I repent for cheating on my taxes. And I repent for taking a bite out of that cracker doing communion before everybody else. I'm sorry. And I repent for tripping that old lady when she walked down the street, Lord. She was looking at me funny. And I repent for taking that wallet out that old man's pocket, okay? He had a lot of bands back then, and I needed the funds, and I'm sorry. I gave you 10%, God, you shouldn't be too mad. I repent for stealing my neighbor's Wi-Fi, but he work at Chrysler, he can afford it. And I repent for always taking that handicapped spot at Walmart, I always parked there and telling people I'm slightly retarded. I repent, I repent, Jesus, I repent. I repent, baby Jesus. And I'm sorry I ate up all that baby fruit snacks in the nursery, but you know that baby was already fat, Lord. I'm trying to look out for him. And I repent, Jesus, for breaking into William's house, but it worked out. He said that if I did this video, he wouldn't call the popo on me. It's all good. I repent. Repent, repentance, or repented is mentioned in the Bible over 100 times. So obviously, it's considered a very important act. Most of us crazy Christians believe that to repent means to, means to cry out to God in repentance for forgiveness of sins. And I have to admit that I am certain that I have probably cried out to God in repentance every day for over 30 years asking God for forgiveness. But is it possible that we've misunderstood what repent means? Let's look into it. There are three words used for repent in the Bible. Two in the Old Testament and one in the New. The first word in the Old Testament used for repent is Nahum, N-A-H-U-M. It means a strong desire to change. The second word in the Old Testament used for repent is Shub, S-H-U-B, meaning a change of mind. And the Greek word used in the New Testament for repent is Metanoia. That means a change of mind, or a change of purpose, or a change of action. Is it possible that all those Bible verses mentioning repentance are not talking about crying out to God for forgiveness, but instead are talking about changing our ways of thinking? I challenge you, look into it for yourself. For years, in order for a lot of verses to make sense to me that mention repentance, I had to kind of overlook some things I had to just have faith or just realize that I just didn't understand it clearly. That is because I was told from the pulpit a definition of repentance that might not be correct. But if we look at the actual definition of the word repentance, it actually makes sense in context of all the scriptures. Try it and see for yourself. Now, let's get into some common sense Christianity that I personally overlooked myself for years. According to scripture, how were the children of Israel forgiven for their sins? They had to offer up burnt offerings and blood sacrifices in the temple of God, right? 
So if that is how they were forgiven, why would they be instructed to cry out to God asking God to forgive them for their sins? What good would crying out to God to forgive them have done? Think about it. That would make absolutely no sense. On top of all that, Paul went to Athens and the Gentiles telling them to repent. But if Paul and the Athens or the Gentiles had the definition of repentance as crying out to God for forgiveness, then they would have obviously looked at Paul like he was crazy. They did not know Moses, nor did they know his law. So why would Paul be commanding them or instructing them to repent, to cry out to God to forgive them for their sins? What sins? What law? Who is Moses? Think about it. One last common sense point I'd like to make. A couple times in the Bible, it mentions how God repented. So who is God crying out to asking to forgive him? Doesn't really make sense, does it? But if we look at the actual definition of repentance, it makes absolute sense that God would change his mind about a decision he made or an, an act he was about to do. Jesus Christ mentioned repenting a lot. But most every time he did, it was tied to repenting for the kingdom of God is at hand. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Like in Mark chapter 1 verse 15, it says, The time has come. Repent and believe the good news of the kingdom. We can't live in the kingdom if we don't change our way of thinking. Is it possible that the kingdom is a state of mind first? before it can become a physical place. Let that marinate. Scripture is clear that if you change your mind or way of thinking, that it will change your life. For instance, there's a scripture that says, be ye transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind. See my video on anxiety and depression where I give a bunch more scriptures to talk about renewing your mind. I'll attach a link to that video at the end of this video. Last point. Under the new covenant that went into effect after the death of Christ on the cross, to cry out to God to forgive you is not repenting. Besides, that supposes that he hasn't forgiven you already. And scripture is clear that you have already been forgiven before you even asked. According to scripture, God simply forgave us like a loving father. We don't have to beg him for it. He already gave it to us. If you want more scriptures and information on Christ's death on the cross and how it forgave us, etc., see my video, Adam versus Jesus. I'll attach a link to that video at the end of this video. So next time you see somebody standing on their soapbox or on a street corner with a bullhorn or something yelling out, repent, repent, simply turn around and go the other way. Because that's exactly what repent means. How many of you already knew this? Am I the only person that just learned this a couple years ago? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see more from us crazy Christians, please hit the like button, share this video and this channel. Subscribe, hit the notifications bell to be notified every time we post a new video. Again, thank you very much for watching us crazy Christians. I appreciate you. Until next time, be blessed.